Hi, my name is Macaulay with Wilder Property Management, and today I am here with my dad, Eddie Wilder, who also happens to be the president and CEO of ERA Wilder Realty. And I've asked you to come here today to kind of answer some basic questions about investing, kind of your personal story, um, you know, how you've been successful in investing, whether commercial, residential, development, you know, kind of pick your brain a little bit on how you've how you've done it. Well, thank you for having me. I'm thank excited you. about being here. <laughs> thank you for coming. So I guess I'll dive right in. Right. Um, the most basic question: Why real estate? Why should people invest in and in real estate, whether it's you know residential, commercial? Well, Macaulay, I think it um, it comes down to what's what's your end goal and what are you comfortable with, and then I think it also comes down: to, Do you have a trusted advisor? You know, you know, you can read books, you can watch YouTube, you, there's lots of articles and information about it out here. But what is your end goal? And no different than if you had a stockbroker, you know, you need a good realtor. Mm -hmm. And uh, back in my early days, you know, I got involved with an agent who I trusted and they put me in, uh, in a really good position to make some money in those days and I did well. So, you know, it depends. Do you, are you trying to build net worth or are you trying to build income? And those are probably the two main reasons you want to do it. You've got an end goal in mind that you want to wake up at some date and use real estate as a mechanism to allow you to retire or do other things in your, in your life. Uh, it's exciting. So I've, I've heard and read that it's a, a low risk mm -hmm. investment compared to some others. Can you talk a little bit about that? I, I think that comes down to... Um, for me it is, absolutely, because it's a space that I've spent... 30 something years in and started off in a very basic form and learned what kind of walk my way up mm -hmm. you know um, so so if with a trusted advisor and, and with some some study and calculation you can you can mitigate your risk and make it pretty conservative because real estate in most cases from a house or a commercial building you know there's an end user there that's going to walk alongside you if you pick the right people and pay for your properties. And it's really neat, it's, it's been great in, in, in our family's life, is that I've been able to find, help people move into businesses or move into homes and use my capital or my leverage ability and help them make money, and, or help them in their goal, and then I will make money off of it. So you, know, you go in and run a doctor or an office for 10 years, and you wake up at the end of the day, and he's almost paid for your entire building. That's a pretty cool avenue, and it's a hard asset you can see. You know, if you buy a Coca-Cola stock, you can only go and look and see that stock online. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have a, but you can ride by your house, you can ride by your building, right. you, you know, and you can watch the market move, ebb and flow. And, and another thing with real estate investments, you will have some times where it might not appreciate that day, but over time, it's like most of the good, solid investments. You buy right, you buy the good stuff, mm -hmm. and it will move up. It will move up, maybe not every day, but you know, right in this moment, we're seeing massive appreciations. I mean, you saw that in, in the home you bought at your first house. Right. I mean, the, you sold it for 20% more than you paid for it five years before, and that leveraged you with interest rates to really buy a home much nicer and have the exact same payment. That's a little bit different than what we're talking about, but it's the same principles. Right. It's like anything else, it's good, solid principles will get you there. You um, encouraged me to take the Ninja Selling class a couple mm -hmm. years ago um, that ERA right. hosts um, right. here. And I know you guys have another class coming up, but right. something that really stuck out to me when mm -hmm. I took the class, just one little portion, right. um, there's lots of great information, but one thing that really stuck out was the investment part. And I don't remember exactly what they called it, but it was something like a, like a college fund yeah. or you know yeah. the basic principle was you know you buy an investment property, yeah. you put a tenant in there, right. and you know by the time that your kid is going to college, it's basically paying for their college. Do you have any kind of spin that you've done with that? Well, or? I just, uh, um, <laughs> no, that, that's one of my favorite things for people. Um, if you can, and you can do it with a couple different opportunities. Um, yours, like your particular house you bought that day was an ideal one to stick into a rental pool. Right. and have somebody continue to pay for it. You'd already built great equity, mm -hmm. you already had a, a reasonable payment, um, you probably need to adjust your interest rate, maybe refinance and adjust your interest rate down so you'd have less of a payment yeah. and, and pay less back in the thing. But one of my favorite things to see young investors do is to take their first house or, or to buy their first property 
and put it in a college fund. And uh, I love to do it when, when I was out listing and selling on a daily basis and you came to me and said, hey, I'm inspected. Of course, my daughter would say, hey, that's awesome. But, but with those guys, I, quite often I would talk to them about buying that house while that child was an infant. You know, and if you did a 15, 20-year mortgage on that home, mm -hmm. by the time the child went to college, you could have $800, $1,000, $1,500, $2,000 a month that came in that you could use towards putting that kid in college. Right. Now, the, my next step was I would tell most of those people, you can sell it and go do, buy a car or do something else you want to do. But what I would recommend for folks to do is take that money and parlay to the second phase. And that second phase comes in to be a retirement account. So imagine if you turn around and you bought the first house, mm -hmm. so you know you put renters in there, by the time your kid went to college, it was paid for. Then you turn around and you, had, you put another one on board, and then once you got it paid for and you put another one, what if you had $2,000, $6,000, $8,000 a month coming in of passive income that's secured by a solid piece of real estate yeah. that somebody else is making the, they, making the payment for you, paying the electric bill for you, all those things. So those things are really, really easy to leverage into. And, you know, it, it comes down to, you know, condition and you're buying all that. But, and you'll hear me say 10 times over this, if you don't have the bandwidth or knowledge in this space, find a professional. There are a lot of a lot of guys and guys and girls in this market that know this business, right. and they can tell you to buy in that space. And I was going to ask you that as well. A lot of people are nervous about getting a you know the wrong tenant or the wrong property, and it's you know not going to give them right. the the income that they were expecting or hoping for. Um, who would you say are like your most important team members, for lack of a better word, sure. to to kind of guide you in the correct path and um, you, you know, you anytime you do any kind of real estate investing, you always need uh, a good attorney, mm -hmm. somebody who can close your deal and make sure you've got a good transaction as far as get, getting it into your ownership. The, the second part of that is having a um, having a um, account, your accountant, or if you do your taxes, understanding tax abilities and things that, that benefit you. Benefit you. One of the best things in my life is I own a lot of buildings, mm -hmm. and I have write-offs all the time. So my tax structure, personally, for me, is much better off because I get to write things off, interest rates and depreciation on buildings and things like that, that have allowed me to keep more of my money than I normally would have to give to Uncle Sam. And it didn't happen overnight. This is, this is a, a progressing process. Unless you inherit a big chunk of cash, you can put down on a bunch of stuff. Mm -hmm. This should You should start off and, of course, your next professional need, again, is that real estate agent I keep talking about. Right. You know, it, just, it just makes a difference because... As you start looking at property, you can decide do you want a squeaky clean brand new property that never needs, doesn't need any repairs, that got warranties behind them, or do you, and I, I like value add. I've always been a value add guy. I always want to buy something kind of under market or at a better deal or something I can do to it to make it better. Fixer up, right? Uh, well, fixer up is one of the terms, but sometimes you can take a property that doesn't have a tenant in it and it's worth this, but you put the right tenant and they pay the right kind of rent. And it's worth 10 or 20% more because your, your value is based off income, not on just the appraisal of the property. You know, and, and we could go for weeks on these subjects, and, right. but that's the basic principle. And I always look at two things when I go, go, well, I look at condition, I look at repairs, I look at, I, I try to find the best markets I can get into. I also come in and look and see, um, is there any equity for me to get by any simple improvements I can do? You know, how many times have we seen a house that's in really bad shape and then somebody goes and cleans it up and said, oh, I should have bought that house. That thing is a doll baby now. Yeah, and when it, when, when, it was a, when it was a dog before, you know. And then what can I do to increase my income? You know, we, we have a beach house right this moment that we're renting, and I moved my rents up $700 a week. And that came from me offering some bites for them to ride on and paddle boards and put a little elevator in. I had to spend some money, but the long-term return were all set and go past the investment I put in it. So, you know, it, it, and the world will move on you. So you just got to be prepared, prepared to be there. So does that make sense? It does, yeah. yeah. But you didn't get to the most important right. team member. Okay, the property manager. Which is Thank me. You. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, you know, that, that comes down that comes down to a, to a real big boy or big girl decision. Yeah. And, um, and you can certainly manage it. But you, but to do that, you need to understand, as you know, the laws. You know what you can and cannot do. How do you service that person? What time limits you have on it? Because there's a very strict set of laws out here 
of how you deal with a tenant, especially residentially. Mm -hmm. You know, how long an air conditioner can be broken or whatever. So um, all those partners are critical. Property management, real estate agent, the whole nine yards. Mortgage. Mortgage, yes, yeah. absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, it was funny this morning, I, I was riding in and we're, we're refinancing a building and my uh, banker called me on the phone, who's fantastic, and um, he gave me some really good rates. And I was kind of joking a little bit, and I said, he said, what do you think? And I said, God, if you could just do a little bit better, I'd be happy. He said, well, what do you want? And I told him to do things I want. He said, let me go work on them. Okay. And you know, it was really cool. He went back and lobbied on my behalf of the bank. Now, I have a 25-year relationship with that bank. You know, so um, they know me. They know my payment history. They know my equity, mm -hmm. and I'm a very loyal client of theirs. So, and the, those people allow you to do things that might cost you a little bit more, but it saves you in the long run from mistakes. I've been kind of a guy over the years that have learned a lot from my mistakes. Yeah. You know, my first big property that I rented out was a sixplex, and it was um, it was pretty scary. I mean, and, and I learned a lot about things I needed to learn. And, and had I had somebody in front of me helping me shortcut those those problems, I'd have been a whole lot better off. Okay. Well, yeah, that, that was, my next question was, when did you buy your first investment property? So was it that... Well, hold on. This is a big high-end deal. Um, we, my, your brother Robert well, had not been born yet. Uh, matter of fact, he had just been born. Um, we lived in a small town called King Street. Okay. I bought my first house for $5,000. The whole house, <laughs> two bedrooms, kitchen, living room, dining room. I mean, that's how much I, my fence costs. So. That's how much your fence costs, exactly. <laughs> and there was, um, and, and, and so I bought that home, and it was a, one of these basic little 800 square foot GI houses, and it had not been taken care of. So we went in and carpeted and painted, and we spent about another $5,000 on the home. And we held on to it for, I guess, about, about a year. And um, got a tenant in it, and I had a guy come up to me one day and said, hey, I want to buy your rental house. And he offered me $15,000. And I thought I was the guru of gurus. I lack a better term, which is probably not popular with some people. I thought I was Donald Trump, you know, pulling off the Trump deal. And uh, so it was, um, yeah, it was, well, you know, you think about it, this was, I was 20, 24 years old, 25 years old, and I'd made $5,000, and it was amazing. So then I parlayed into another property and took that money and used it, and there's a, there's a thing out here called 1031 Exchange, and it's still available today, that you can shelter that money inside investment properties and put it into another one and use Uncle Sam's tax gain money to go forward. But that's that's kind of a whole other subject. Yeah, I was going to ask, is that how you kind of com you parlayed into commercial investing? Yeah. Is that how you kind of ramped up? Not really. Um, what happened to me going from residential to commercial is that I got enough residential properties, and I did not have a property manager. Um, that it got to be too much. Mm -hmm. And so I turned around and, and sold them almost in a package. Uh, sold them, I bundled them together, and there are people out here who will buy them from you in packages. They want to have 10 properties or 20 properties right. or 50 yeah. properties. And so I parlayed them into a, a package and sold the package, and then I went and bought a commercial property. And commercial, not always, everything's not always exactly the same, but commercial usage tends to be a little bit easier. When you buy the property, a lot of times you'll set up what they call a triple net lease, where somebody pays the taxes, the insurance, and the common area maintenance. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they take care of the roof and the air conditioning. So you have almost no liability on that building. So what you collect in rent is true money for you other than what Uncle Sam wants right. as, far as, as far as income. So what I did is I took those properties, put them in a bundle. I 1031 them over to a commercial building that I bought similar properties, and I got one tenant that paid me the rent that all of them paid me. So I had you know one bill coming in every month mm -hmm. and and so that made a difference. And so I have definitely used ten thirty one's been my friend my friend right. forever. I've always been able to buy value add properties. They always when I finish up with them, they're worth well not always. Most of the time they're worth more than, than we did in the beginning. And so when I moved it, I got say I made twenty five thousand dollars on this property. I could shelter Uncle Sam's twenty five thousand dollars and I could move it to the next property and use his money. And as long as I didn't touch those proceeds, I could continue to use his money. We just bought a place at the beach. We sold a building in Columbia, and we bought a place at the beach, and um, the tax liability was pretty bad. I mean, it was, it was a scary number. Mm -hmm. And I had it because I had sold the building and I had all the cash. 
but it was terrible to make a profit and give it to Uncle Sam, so I sheltered it inside here and it allowed me to buy a magnificent property down the coast. Is, is there a standard return that you look for or that people should look for when purchasing or thinking about purchasing a, an yes, investment property? Yes, yes, and, 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 and standard is probably not the right term, um, okay. but everybody should have their, their idea of threshold. You know, what is it worth for me to take the risk? Because everything has some level of risk. Mm -hmm. This one's a pretty modest risk if you buy it right and you put the right people in place and the right team around you. Right. Um, I like 10%. Okay. I want a 10% return on my money. And I really, the only way that I'll vary below that is if I can buy something that I say, oh my gosh, I bought this property for $100,000 and it's worth one twenty-five, and then I get an 8% return. Well, I picked up $25,000 worth of equity and then I've turned around and, and got a return. And then the other thing is you need to look at your return on investment is does it give you the ability to pay for your asset? Can what you're doing carry the full expense of the asset? And that's the payment, the taxes, mm -hmm. the insurance, and, right. and residential especially, because it's very seldom on triple net lease on any of that kind of stuff. Right. You know, you pick up some of those, and they still pay the electric and water mm -hmm. and those kind of things, but those are a little bit different. Okay, and last question for you. Can, yeah. can you tell me um, about a time where something was maybe like a, a, a big risk yeah. but turned into an even greater reward? Um, Maybe something that mom was like, don't do it. <laughs> well, the beach house was one of those. We, okay. um, the, the property had been on the market for two years. The property had a fire in it. The property was 15,000 square feet. It was a monster. Mm -hmm. The town didn't like me because, uh, or didn't like the property because the guy who owned it before me broke every rule he could. Right. And he, so there were a lot of things that were not conforming and they ended up in a big lawsuit and ended up selling. Um, the house had been a foreclosure and it had been an abandoned for two years. And I brought most of my family in, including you, mm -hmm. and everybody had doubts. Everybody kind of looked at me and said, love the property and had doubts. And, um, but I could see where I, where I could make an impact on this property. And it took me almost two years. We're finishing up all the last phases of it right this moment. And it has about a 19% return. And not only that, but we, as you well know, we, have, we now occupy and own half of it that we don't even put on the market. So imagine the return I would get right. if, if, I had, if I had it fully leased, but my wife confiscated half of it. So you, there's a wife disclaimer in the statement. So, so all that doubt has gone away for her. Well, she won't leave there now. She, <laughs> she loves it. So, so it's made it fun. But, uh, you, know, and, you know, you don't always win at the level you want to win at. But it's, it's about doing your homework. It's about putting the right team around you. It's about looking at the right investments, but this this can be very good for you, and it's it's not a it can be a short game, mm -hmm. but for for me it's a long game. It, it's allowed me to to do things I never could have done before because you end up you wake up one day and you get a, a five thousand square foot building in Lexington paid for. That's a pretty cool asset to have, right. and and it's worth that amount of cash, and then you've got somebody paying you rent every single month paying your taxes, paying your insurance. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'd love to talk to you more about this at a later time. And, and uh, it, it's, it's been great for me. And um, I have one particular client I was thinking of while you are talking about this. And over the over a 10-year period of time, I sold two or four of him 52 properties. Wow. And he put some really nice money in the back. He just retired and he's excited about that. And, you know, between what he's done in his business and what he did in his real estate investment, He's got a double whammy. So if done right, mm -hmm. and you're a good steward, and you and you don't, there's, there's a good old saying: don't love don't love real estate, it won't love you back. You know, don't get romantic with it. Right. You know, treat this like a business. This this will be a business, and this will this. The better you do your work up front, the better you put your team together, the better all you'll return you'll get long term. And again, it's your property manager, it's your banker, it's your attorney. It's your friends, it's your network. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the, and even when, when the market goes up and when the market goes down, those opportunities are there. So you, you've got to you've got to understand the market and you've got to have a professional help you with that. So I hope this helped a little bit. It did. Thank you. Thank you. I, I mean I get to hear a lot of your stories and ask you a lot of questions, right. you know, just organically, you know, at home and growing right. up. I've I've kind of seen you do a lot of these things. So I really appreciate you letting me sit you in front of a camera Absolutely. and answer Absolutely. a few yeah, questions. Glad to do it. So thank you guys for joining us today. I hope this was helpful, and I thank you again for, for letting me sit down and ask you a few questions. 
Um, hopefully this is something that we can continue doing in the future and um, have a great day.